Hi guys, welcome back aboard good old Athena for yet more DIY fun. If you're new to our channel, I've spent the last five years refitting Athena, complete with rebuilding the deck, a very extensive osmosis treatment, building a new rudder, painting the top sides, and tons of other cool projects that are documented right here on YouTube. Two weeks ago, I was joined by my lovely fiance, Eva, and we are just about to untie the lines to start the long journey to bring Athena from Europe to the US. It looks like the weather is going to be perfect to apply non-skid on the deck later in the week. That is one of our weather dependent projects, so it would be nice to get that crossed off the list. If we can get Martin to lend us a hand, it would also be nice to get some software put on the controller for the Itty Bitty Perkins DIY gen set, and potentially also install the gen set here aboard Athena. Of course, that is dependent on Martin having time to help us, and I know he's busy with other stuff, so we'll see, but we've got plenty of tasks to work on here, so yeah, let's get started. I think this task, install and configure alternator, is a good one to get started on. We can install it, but we can't do the configuration just yet. A few months ago, I showed you guys this high output alternator and this custom pulley kit over here, all purchased from Ocean Planet Energy in the US. Now it turned out this combination was actually never gonna fit on my Volvo D240. But not all this lost, Ocean Planet Energy has sent me this alternator instead. This should be a better fit for the Volvo D240. Everything except for the output, this thing should be a one-to-one -one replacement for the stock Volvo alternator. This is the stock alternator that came with the engine. It's 115 amps at 12 volts. And then over here, we've got the much spiffier looking machined 185 amps at 24 volts alternator. This is a thing of beauty. It almost makes me wanna clean the engine compartment before installing it. Even with this new alternator, we won't be able to use the custom pulley kit, but that's okay. The purpose of this was to give us high alternator RPMs at low engine RPMs. To get the full Monty in terms of juice from one of these guys, they need to be spinning pretty quick. In fact, I think to get the rated 185 amps, this needs to spin at something like 8,000 RPM. That's of course the reason why this custom pulley kit has a giant pulley that mounts on top of the pulley here on the crankshaft. But uh, yeah, even with the much smaller pulley here, we'll still be able to get a good amount of juice from the alternator. Without the custom pulley kit, I believe at I forget if it was 2200 or 2400 engine RPMs, we will be able to get roughly 158 amps from this guy or somewhere in the neighborhood of four kilowatts, which I think that's still pretty dang good. If one is allowed to have a favorite part of an alternator, I think for me, it's this part here. There's just some really nice curves here and the machine surface just makes this look really nice. Along with the alternator, we're gonna be using this external regulator, but uh, yeah, like I said, we can't really do the configuration of this guy yet because I don't have the DC system all wired up yet. So we'll get back to this guy. For now, let's just see if this fits. It is a little bit cramped in here. So uh, let me just see if I can get this thing installed. <sighs> oh my God, this alternator doesn't fit either. We might be able to make it fit by swapping out a couple of bolts, but out of the box, it does not fit. I can't line up the alternator on its mount because this part here is making contact with this fastener right here. I think maybe if I swap these out for some that are a little bit lower profile, I might be able to make it work, but out of the box, yeah. No go. I've completely removed the bolt in there that I thought it was getting caught up on. And uh, yeah, this thing still won't fit. Now this part is getting caught up on the engine leg there. So yeah, I don't know if I'm doing something wrong here. I don't think so, but yeah, that thing is not gonna fit. For comparison, here is the stock alternator. As you can see, it's pretty open here, whereas the spiffy model has this chunky bit here. And I think that is what's getting in the way. <sighs> In a somewhat annoyed state, I headed to the workshop to start making the door frame for the head. It ended up being a fiddly business that took all day. This is both what I hate and what I love about DIY projects aboard a boat. You end up making almost everything from scratch. It's fun because you get to learn new skills, but it's also very time consuming. While I was generating sawdust, Ava got busy organizing aboard Athena. It's been a few days now since Mess and I have moved onto the boat. Although it's been really nice to be here and be able to work on the boat and knock some things off our list, it's definitely been a little chaotic. 
classic. As you can see, the saloon is a bit of a mess. We have suitcases, a cooler, lots of tools, and like the autopilot is right there that I'm terrified I'm going to step on and break. So in order to control some of this chaos, I'm going to unpack these suitcases and organize the forward cabin clothing locker. I already started unpacking some things into the drawers that Mess built, and I love them. They're so deep, they're nice and long. I can fit so much stuff in them. I seriously, I love them so much. But next is to tackle the long-term storage area. We decided to go with these plastic bins from Ikea. We had many debates over whether we should go with these or soft-sided bins to be able to fit more things inside but because they're so close to the chain plates we decided that if or when they leak we didn't want our things to get ruined and i've never had much luck with vacuum bags so these seem to be a good choice and they're clear so we'll be able to see what's inside of them i also picked up some extra little organization doohickeys as mess would say for inside of these drawers so let's go lug that suitcase in here and start unpacking Actually, this one I'm kind of glad Mess isn't here for. This one's supposed to be filled with all of his stuff. But as you can see, a nice thick layer of my things. I think my biggest feat is going to be how to organize these V-birth lockers. Um, we can't really fit a piece of wood in here because the opening's not big enough for a shelf. But, I mean, they're huge, so I think the trick is how to utilize the entire space and to keep things organize so if anybody has any suggestions of what's worked for them that would be great everything is so neat and organized and in its spot and look i didn't even use all the containers but I'm sure we'll find plenty of stuff to shove in there in the next couple weeks. But all we have left to do is figure out how to tie these down so they're not sliding all around while we're sailing. I have to admit, I was a little bit nervous about the amount of storage we would have in the boat, but I feel like, even in my naivety, I feel like we have a bunch of space left. There's a ton of room in the hanging lacquer still. We have this cubby area along with behind the settee, under the settee, under the cabin sole, under the V-berth, this locker back here, and all this space next to the freezer. So yeah, I feel like we have a good amount of space. However, I will let you know if I feel the same way in a month. We ordered the wood for the drawer fronts and we're gonna be doing them a little bit differently than these ones. These cabinets, the insides are slated wood, but for these ones, we're going to be doing plywood just because this takes a really long time and we need to expedite the process so later on this week we're going to be doing some experimenting and staining plywood this is the rough door frame i made up at the workshop it's not sanded or anything yet but i think we're at a stage where we can go ahead and do a dry fit but first i will have to remove this temporary performance oriented door that i put up a few days ago Considering how much time it took to make this thing, I really, really hope it fits. I've never made a door frame before, so uh, yeah, fingers crossed this actually works out. I think the top has to go on before the forward side. Nice! I would say that thing looks distinctively like a door frame. I had a little mishap with the router up here and some of this edge got torn off. But I think a little bit of sanding will help with all of that. I brought the door frame here to the workshop. Now that the boat is considered a dust-free zone, I don't want to contaminate it. I could have done this out in the cockpit, but Ava's busy scrubbing the entire deck and the cockpit in preparation of applying Kiwi Grip maybe tomorrow or the day after. I don't need to do a ton of sanding here. I mainly just want to break these edges here so they're not sharp. And also there are some little marks on the back of this one, but those will sand out. Thank you. 
Ava did a great job washing the deck. It looks beautiful and very much ready for a Kiwi grab. Now while I was up at the workshop besides sanding, I also cut a small piece of plywood that's gonna fill the gap over the door frame. This counts as the final test fair. Let's go ahead and get all of this adhered in place. So let's do the final assembly of the puzzle with a little bit of thickened epoxy. I'm hoping we can get away with just using thickened epoxy on this little top piece here. Also, if not, we might have to lay up a little bit of glass. This should be plenty strong enough. While the thing epoxy was doing its thing, we decided to test some different colors of stain on plywood like Ava mentioned earlier. This is a water-based stain, so I don't think we'll run into any compatibility issues with wood sealer or epoxy. It would be awesome if we could have just used teak veneered plywood, but that stuff is impossibly expensive here in Denmark. We'll get back to our little test a little bit later in this video. Back to the alternator. After some fiddling around and emailing back and forth with Bruce, I decided to take the plunge and modify the existing tensioning arm. That involved cutting it in half and elongating it by 28 millimeters and raising it by around 17 millimeters. My measurements were a little bit off, so Ava and I ended up going back and forth to the workshop four times before I was finally able to weld everything together. And here is what will hopefully be the key to solving our alternator issue. All praise the red doohickey. I spent about two hours figuring out how to modify the existing tensioning arm to fit, getting the measurements right, and then about four hours going back and forth between here and the workshop. And this was all supposed to be just a quick bolt on good to go situation, which yeah, this seems to be about par for the boat projects here aboard Athena. The key to making this alternator fit was to move the mounting block on top of the engine support instead of below, but uh, I'll show you that in a minute. Let's first see if this thing still fits. It's looking very promising. Ta-da! And look at this, the alternator can slide to tension the belt. It looks like everything fits. This is the mounting block I mentioned. That's the one I moved from down here to up there, which is of course also why I had to modify the tensioning arm. Like I mentioned, I moved the tensioning arm up by about 17 millimeters and made it longer by about 28 millimeters. Because of the new location of the alternator, it does look like I need a slightly bigger belt, but on the plus side of things, once tension is put on that belt, it looks like all the stuck hoses will work. So that's pretty good. In great spirit, I set out to cut the hole in the dodger that'll allow us to lead the main sheet into the cockpit to a winch. I patched the old holes in the dodger when I redid that a few years back. Now this is the exact same setup that was aboard Athena when I purchased her, so I used the old photos to figure out the rough position of the hole. This is when I realized that I had moved the eye that the main sheet attaches to on the cabin top when I rebuilt the interior, so the hole in the dodger needs to be moved further outboard. Don't! This hole will just serve as an extra hole for um, ventilation or future lines that need to be led aft. Moving the boom from side to side, we figured out the size of the opening we'd need and opened up the hole. We also need to install the winch for the main sheet. This time, luckily, I didn't mess up any of the holes. After having applied a little bit of sealant, Ava tightened the nuts from down below while I held the bolts in place. We also need to install this clutch here in the cockpit to take the load off of the winch. I've made a spacer out of two pieces of teak that's roughly gonna bring the clutch up to the right level. Unfortunately, I do not have any bolts that are long enough to actually through bolt this through the cabin top. So we'll have to wait until next week to secure this guy and do the final trimming of the hole. It would also be nice to have a self tailoring winch here, but that's not really in the budget right now. Here inside of the boat, there is another project that would be nice to tackle, and that is the engine access. Right now, getting access to the forward end of the engine requires the use of a torque 20 bit and loosening two screws. That's not super quick, so let's improve that. Before this area is ready for paint, there's definitely some holes that need to be filled, a little bit of fairing needs to happen, but I'm not too concerned about that right now. I just want the companionway steps to be easy to remove. That will involve putting in place this little support down in the bottom here, so uh, let's start with that. If I can just get this thing screwed in place, then we should be all set. 
Judging from the amount of holes from these old barrel bolt doohickeys, these have definitely been moved more than a couple of times before. As you might be able to see here, two different sizes were used. A small one, probably the original one, and then a bigger one later on. And the small one was moved at least once because there's two sets of holes. Well, and now we should have toolless entry into the engine compartment. That is quite the little upgrade. We have another important task, and that is to give Athena her name back. We decided to keep the name Athena because we think it's fitting and also we're a little nervous about the superstition about bad luck after changing the boat's name. Is that roughly where you want it? I think so. Okay, so maybe a little further over. Yeah, we're not too far off level. Mm -hmm. So we've never tried this before. Um, I'm assuming we just remove the back part and then smoosh it in place. Once we've upgraded the wind vane, it's gonna go back on the boat and be right here. So we wanted to make sure that we had a little bit of room between that and the name. But yeah, I think this is gonna work out. Ta-da! Maybe present Athena yeah. with her new name, also Athena. Of course, the hull is a little bit dirty right now, but uh, she'll clean up nice. And I think the new name looks amazing. It looks so good. Last week, I coated the countertop for the vanity here and some epoxy to protect it from water. This week, we've applied a couple of coats of varnish to protect it from UV. And here it is. The countertop is installed. The sink is installed. And the faucet is installed. But of course, we don't have pressurized water yet, so it doesn't really do anything. But I think the head is coming along nicely once we've got a couple of cabinet doors there, some door fronts, and some trim over here for the entrance into the shower, which we're going to be picking up Tuesday. I think it'll look like a million bucks. Along with the trim for the shower area, we're also picking up some plywood for a door so we can get rid of this uh, somewhat shabby arrangement. Earlier this week, we also stopped by Mess's doctor where we picked up antibiotics, painkillers, local anesthetics, band-aids, syringes, and lots and lots of other goodies. On longer passages, we're gonna need to be able to handle most medical issues. So this, along with a few books and a sat phone, should go a long way in keeping us healthy and alive. I wanna keep this stuff organized. We got a write up from the doctor and he thoroughly went through with us which each medication is for. So what I'm gonna do is do a type up of each medication, laminate that and put it into a baggie. So when we need something, we can just pull a baggie up, read what it says real quick and be able to use it. Speaking of lists, shall we go to the most pressing list of them all? There are a few tasks we can close this week. For instance, this one, get prescription drugs from the doctor. We can also move into access into done Ooh. we can move this one install main sheet winch yes. to done and we can move yes figure out dinghy location into done yes there's also a bunch of tasks we can move into doing so for instance that would be install and configure alternator i've installed it haven't configured it yet so it's going into doing we also got started installing the rope clutch in the cockpit. And we also got started on the door for the head and the trim for the head. We mentioned none skidding the deck earlier in the video. We haven't done that yet and that's because of the weather. It's been really hot and very, very sunny. But tomorrow is supposed to be nice and cold and overcast, which should be perfect for none skidding the deck. But we haven't really started it, so we're not gonna be moving it into doing. As you can see, progress is slowish, but steady. We're getting tasks moved from the left-hand side of the board to the right hand side into the done column and of course we want to move all of these before we leave for the UK. Speaking of Scotland we may have a bit of an issue. Yes so Ava's a US citizen I'm a Danish citizen that means we're kind of in a little bit of a tough spot because of Schengen so we can't stay more than 30 or 90 days in yep. Schengen because of Ava. Our plan for getting around that challenge was to spend this coming winter in the UK, Scotland and Ireland. For visa reasons, we kind of have to jump between Ireland and England because I'm only allowed to stay in England for three months after Brexit. Then we'd go to Ireland for three months because then Ava would need to leave. Yeah. Yeah, and that would kind of reset my shanking clock, and really those are the only places we can be together. It's a good solid plan, and those are places I've always wanted to spend more time, so I think it's a good plan. 
Yes, but then COVID came along and kind of ruined it all. And that leaves us in kind of a difficult situation because right now we don't actually know that we're allowed to go to Scotland or the UK. And yeah, that things, is a challenge. Yeah, because... things keep changing. We don't know from day to day. No, they change very fast. Yeah. And if we cannot get out of Schengen, we can't be together. So if you know of a way that we can sort of be guaranteed to be allowed to go into the UK, we would love to hear about it. Yeah, if anybody has any experience in that department. Yes, because mm -hmm. this is a big challenge for us. Like we yeah. said, if, if we can't get out of Schengen, Ava is going to have to leave the boat and go back to the US. And we do not want that to happen. Now, we know that's quite the serious note to end the video on, but we are hoping and hopeful that it will all turn out. Yes. And we also hope to see all of you guys back here aboard Athena next week for yet more DIY fun. Mm -hmm. We are going to be non skidding the deck tomorrow. I'm going to get started hooking up the BMS to the lithium cells so we can get the lithium battery up and running. Makes us closer to getting water. Yes, the pressurized water is getting closer and closer. Yeah. So, yeah, we hope to see all you guys back here aboard Athena next week for yet more DIY fun. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, to leave a like. See you.